Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. It's time for episode 16 of my crafting podcast. Welcome back to my crafting podcast. If you're new to my channel, this is where I share all of my fun works in progress, some of my favorite sewing and knit and crochet notions, and just whatever fun crafty things I've been working on. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. But before I do, I want to mention that I did choose the winners from episode 15, so make sure to go back to that video. Underneath the video in the description box, I listed all of the winners there. I will also pop them up on the screen here as well. I did notify you via YouTube that you've won. I've only heard from about half of those winners, so please Please make sure to email me. You can send me an email at erica at confessionsofahomeschooler.com and then that way I can get your prize out to you. The winners for last month's giveaways were Jody Ballantyne, Melissa Alexander, Jan M, Kimberly Glover, Rebecca Taylor, Lucy Lai, Lei, and uh, Kaimei Meng and C Hill. So make sure that you email me so that I can get a prize sent out to you ASAP. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm gonna start off with my favorite notions. This is a new thing that I've recently added and I like to just share a little notion at the beginning, just highlighting one of my favorite craft notions that I really enjoy using. So I'm gonna start off with my alpha bitties and actually these cute little jars that they're sitting in as well. So here is what the jar looks like. These are just little plastic jars. These are from Fat Quarter Shop and so are the alpha bitties. And this is kind of what the alpha bitties look like. They're just these little labeled plastic squares. Now you can use sticky notes or you can even write on your blocks with friction erasable pins. Um, I actually prefer to use these. And they're just plastic, so they're nice and sturdy. And I use them to label all kinds of things. Sometimes I will put like a number on top of, or on the end of a row if I'm putting a quilt row together and I don't want to get the rows out of order. Most of the time I use them to label all of my pre-cut quilt pieces. So when I'm making a quilt and I cut up all the little pieces for the quilt, I will label them with these alpha bitties so that I don't get them mixed up. Now not all patterns do this, but all of my patterns do have either a letter or number associated with each piece that you have to cut. That way it makes it really easy for you to keep them all organized. If you have a pattern that doesn't have that, a lot of times I will go through and just write a letter next to each piece so that I can keep those organized. Because when you have all the pieces cut out and they're all different sizes, or if you have some that are similar in size, it can be really helpful and then you don't mess up when you're assembling your quilt blocks. They come in a couple different colors. I have pink, aqua, and gray and they're relatively inexpensive. I think they're under $4 for a pack. So I did wanna share the alpha bitties. If you aren't using these, I definitely suggest giving them a try. I think they're gonna kinda of change your quilting game. And as always, I'll link everything I'm talking about in the description below the video, so if you're wondering where I got anything I'm mentioning, take a look down there and it will all be there. The next thing I wanna highlight, and this is kind of a random notion, and you're probably gonna wonder why I'm including it in a sewing video, but I'll tell you in just a second, that would be these comic book boards, and I actually recently just got a whole new set. These are all all brand new and still cellophane together. Um, and I use these to store all of my yardage on. And I do have a video on how I store my yardage, so I will link that somewhere on the screen here for you. And these are definitely not a must have, but they do work really well to keep your yardage stored. So instead of trying to, I store my yardage vertically like this, instead of having them just flopping all over the place when I try and pull one out or, you know, put it back, having them on these boards just gives them a little bit of stability and so it makes my life a lot easier. Plus I think it looks cute. It's kind of like a bunch of little mini bolts on my Ikea shelves over here. And so love storing my fabric on these and I still have a bunch more to put on. So just got this in the mail the other day. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive right into knit and crochet because I have two fun projects that I want to show you. Um, one is a new video that's gonna be coming soon and the other one is just a project I did on my own. We recently went to a yarn festival here, a local yarn festival, and I found a vendor. She actually doesn't have an online presence at all, so you can't order from her website, unfortunately, but she does do a lot of different yarn shows. Um, so I asked her if there was anywhere I could reference and she just doesn't really have any, but she does sell kits for these really cute Nordic wool mitts. And she has mittens and fingerless mitts. And so I got the kit for the fingerless mitt. And here is her card. It says warm woolens for cool people. And the pattern that I actually got was called Rocky Mountain Hand Warmers. And it comes in a kit with everything that you need to make it. And I wanted to show you the yarn. This is all that I have left from the yarn, but she wraps mohair and then kind of a marled yarn together. And you get this really cool look when you start knitting with it. So here, 
are my mitts and how they turned out. And you do this little color work section down here and then the top is just that marled. Um, and then the cuffs are really just straight knit with a row of um, pearls right there. And then here is the thumb side. And then both of them had this little uh, flower kind of uh, detail on it. This was fun to do. I actually hadn't done anything like that before. So um, mine turned out a little, they're kind of rustic. <laughs> I think they fit the gloves. Um, I'm not very good at it. Here's the first one. And then here's, actually, I think this is the first one I did. I think the other one turned out better. I can't remember, um, but they definitely, you know, I could probably use a little bit of embroidery <laughs> work, um, but these mitts are really cool and they're really, really warm. Now I will say that with the wool plus the mohair mixed, every time I um, was working on these, I definitely was getting like a scratchy throat. <laughs> so I probably won't, I don't know if I'll wear them much, but they were so much fun to make. So let me try one on for you here. So look how cute they are. They're adorable and they were just so much fun to make. And mitts like this go really, really fast. I mean, I think it took me a few days to make these, um, but really that's just because I was taking breaks. Honestly, you can make mitts pretty quick, especially the finger list. You don't have to do any decreases or anything. You really just go till it's long enough and then just bind off and then add your thumb and you're done. So here they are. Um, these are again called the Rocky Mountain Hand Warmers and I think she does have a page on Ravelry. She's um, Linda Helberg George on Ravelry. Like I said, she doesn't sell her uh, stuff online, her kits online or her pattern. Um, the pattern just came with the kit. So I apologize, um, I can't really get you information on this. But if you're gonna be in Estes Park um, this June, they do have a wool festival there and she will be vending there. So if you're in Colorado and wanna head up to the mountains, she will have a vendor um, booth there. So you can check her out there. Okay, the next thing I've been working on is so much fun. And I showed you guys this before. I have since put it in my Amalfi tote because it's just a little bit bigger than the box I had it in. So these are all of my Lori Holt chunky threads and those are all the granny squares that I am still working on. I still haven't fully decided what I'm gonna do with the rest of these granny squares. Um, they aren't blocked or anything and they're all just random colors and just so much fun. And then here, are all of my threads. And in the very bottom of this bucket is all of my white thread, which is what I'm planning on using to um, sew all the granny squares together with. I still have to do another round of just white on the outside. And I don't know if any of you guys have used the Lori Holt Chunky thread, but I feel like the colored threads are just slightly thicker than the white. Um, and the white is called cloud. So if you guys have used that and you're finding that same thing, leave a comment below because I think it's so weird. I'm using these colors and they're all fun. They're size two, so it's a thinner, uh, yarn anyways but then when I get to the white I feel like it's even thinner so I don't know what's going on there or if the dye like plumps up the yarn a little bit or what but the white is definitely a little bit thinner I mean I think it still looks okay but it's just kind of weird so I was wondering if any of you guys have um, noticed that either I am using my Clover Amore hook for this and I chose, she said you could use a, an E or a G. I went ahead with the G because it's a little bigger and I was hoping that would make my granny squares turn out just a little bit bigger. Um, so they are a little bit looser. If you want like a tighter look, then I would go with the E. Um, but I started with this, so now I kind of have to keep going. Now the thing that I wanna show you, um, and this is a video coming soon. Actually, I think it already released by the time this is gonna go live. But I did go ahead and make a granny square bag using all of those granny squares that I had showed you last time. And this bag is so easy and fun to put together. And then I did a really cute, delicate, like scalloped border around the handle. And I just thought that was such a cute little touch. Kind of made it just have that, I don't know, just something a little bit more extra than just a plain old handle. Um, now, like I said, I do have some kind of holes in this bag just because of the nature of granny squares and that I use that larger hook. So I don't know if you can see there, but I definitely have some holes. So I'm thinking about lining this bag. Um, so let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on how to line it. Um, and then that way things won't be falling out of my bag. Plus I think that would also help with, you know, the stretchiness of this bag. Cause I don't want it to get too stretched or distorted. And of course, being that it's kind of a cotton thread, it will, or cotton yarn, it will stretch some. So I think that might also help just the overall structure of the bag to line it. So, but anyways, look at how cute that is. It's so much fun. And now I just have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of my granny squares. I'm thinking a, 
I'm thinking an afghan, <laughs> but that's a lot of squares. So I might make another bag, just a different style. Um, so the squares aren't on point. Instead, they would be uh, you know, more like a rectangular shape bag. I don't know. We'll see how far I get. But so far, whenever I'm sitting and waiting, like for my uh, daughter when she's in choir or whatever, I have to sit in the car and wait. And so I just sit in the car and crochet granny squares or at night. So they're really fast and easy and just like a bunch of little mini projects to keep my hands busy. And I am going to apologize because our clouds are coming and going. And so it, the lighting is probably crazy in this video. So I apologize, but I can't really control the weather. Okay, since it's June, we're gonna reshow the June trucks of the month and then I'm gonna give you guys a July sneak peek. So let's start off with the cross stitch ones. I showed this last month, but I think it bears showing again because it is so cute. This might be one of my favorite uh, cross, stitch, cross stitch trucks that I've done. It's so cute and the colors are just so bright and fun and it just screams summer. So it's got the surfboard on top with the little flowers on it. And then it's got a couple beach balls, a sun on the truck, and then those adorable little crabs. Uh, in between the truck and the month and then a little flower hanging off that end. And so this was just so cute. This fla uh, fabric was from Elizabeth Hartman. It is her new plaid fabric and I just think it looks so good with this cross stitch. And then let's take a look at July. Now I did have a lot of requests from my fellow Canadian friends who know that I'm probably going to be putting a United States flag in the back of the July truck. And they were correct, but they would like something maybe alternate. So I did try and come up with something that's a little bit more universal for July, but let's take a look at the official July one. So we've got this adorable truck. I thought I would put a cute little gingham quilt hanging off the back of the truck. So that's what that is right there. Of course, there's like a million flags coming off the truck and then these little patriotic banners. And then I wanted to do something kind of quilty. So I did sort of a quilt block looking starburst there in the middle. And I went ahead with the aqua, navy, and red for this because I just thought it just was so fun. And then for the fabric, I chose, um, oh, there's, I don't know if you guys can see that there's hot glue. This aqua gingham, and I believe this was from my, um, I think it's from my Bonnie and Camille vintage picnic line, but I can't remember 100%. So don't quote me on that, but I'm sure you can find an aqua gingham if you're looking for it. This one was from my stash, but look how cute that turned out. I love it so much. This again, I mean, between the June and July trucks, I really can't decide which one is gonna be my favorite because I feel like they both are just absolutely adorable. And I hope you guys are enjoying all of these trucks of the month. Now, like I said before, as soon as July releases, which will be June 15th, um, the July stuff will release, then I'm gonna go ahead and bundle it all together so you can get all the trucks in one bundle instead of purchasing them individually. So I know a lot of people have been asking for that. So I will do that for the cross stitch and for the quilt patterns. And those bundles will probably also be offered in print. I'm not gonna offer the individual trucks in print because just the cost of getting all those patterns printed is just not worth it. Um, and so, but the bundle will be. So I'll probably bundle, or I'll probably offer the bundle in print, but the individual ones are just still gonna be PDF only. But again, July will be releasing June 15th and and here's another quick look at both of those trucks. So those are adorable, I'm so excited. It's like every time I do one of these, I can't wait for the next month to get here so I can like put out the new one because it's always my fave. Okay, now let's just take a quick peek. I haven't had time to stitch it yet, but this is what I'm gonna be releasing for the July alternative. I went ahead and decided to do a little holder in the back so it looks like the, it's holding like a quilt block um, hanging from it. And then I did another little quilt block underneath. And then I went ahead and left these little flag banners down there on the bottom because I feel like those can just be kind of universal and you can do this in any color. I went ahead for the red and white for Canada, but you could do this block in any color that you want and just you know have it just be kind of a universal stitch block. So that is the July alternative if you don't live in the United States and you wanted to do something different. Okay, I'm gonna stand up. So here is the June truck of the month and you guys all saw this last month as well this was made using lori holt fabrics and then i also did one of her kind of cheater prints on the back so the whole thing is this gingham patchwork kind of cheater print so and then i told you guys i'm trying to be a little more brave with my quilting and so i've just done these little swirls and i was going to go back in and fill in these empty spaces but i don't know i just sort of decided not to so Maybe someday I will, but I have too many things going on. So for now, that swirl uh, is what you're gonna get. But I think this one turned out really cute. So this was for June. 
And then here is the July truck, again, super cute. So of course I was gonna put a little waving flag in the background, and then I decided to add a star on top of the truck because why not? And then this fabric is actually a mix of a bunch of lines. Some of these are from my day sale line from Bonnie and Camille, so they've been in my stash for a long time. Some are from Vintage Picnic. The white is my traditional Moda 9900-97. And then what are the letters? The letters are a gingham that I had in my stash, and I actually don't remember what this gingham was, so I apologize. It's just a red and white gingham. And then for the backing, um, I was at a quilt shop the other day, and I found this really cute uh, star print and I apologize. I don't know what this one is either I'll try and look it up and if I can I'll put it um, in the description box below uh, But I just bought a little bit of it because I thought oh, that's so cute for a patriotic backing and then I used my vintage picnic navy and white gingham. And someone was asking me if I was going to buy gingham on a bolt because I use it so much. And I was like, you know what? That's actually a really good idea. So um, I may be doing that in the future because I love gingham bindings. For some reason, they're my favorite and they just seem like so fun summery quilt to me. So I love doing those. So I probably should do that at some point. And then I also added this little Made in America label to the back. And this came in one of my sew sampler boxes from Fat Quarter Shop. And so I just thought that was the most perfect label. Of course, it doesn't have my name or anything on it, um, but I just thought this was so cute. So here it is again, the July Quilty Truck of the Month. And I love it so much. And then I do have an alternative for the quilty truck as well. I haven't had time to sew it yet. If I do, I'll insert a video here showing what that's gonna look like. Um, but here is a printout of what that truck is gonna look like. And so instead of a flag in the back, I thought I would just do this fun starburst. It looks like a quilt block. Um, it is a quilt block. And then also it kind of looks like a little firework or something like that. And so I thought that would just be a fun alternative for the July truck. So hopefully you guys like those alternatives if you aren't living in the United States. And um, I know I've had a lot of questions because July is coming to an end, which means we have completed a full year worth of our quilty trucks. And so they're asking if I'm gonna do another series for next year. And the good news is I think I am. I already have a lot of the designs done. Um, I just need to get work on making them. And so they're gonna be really cute. I think you guys are gonna like them. I don't wanna give anything away yet, uh, but they will be monthly again. I was thinking about doing like just a seasonal one so there's less of them but I had too many ideas floating around in my head. So we are gonna be doing another monthly set of stitchy and um, stitchy and quilty. They're not trucks this time, and I don't wanna say what they are because I don't wanna ruin the surprise, but those will be coming soon, so stay tuned. So the other exciting news that I have is I know a lot of you have taken my Quilting 101 e-course, and you guys have loved it, and in that e-course, I said there was gonna be an intermediate class following up, and it's been taking me a little bit of time to get it together just because it's so much information, um, but it is basically done. I just need my husband to put the final touches on it to make sure that you know technically everything works, and then we're gonna release that class. So I gave a sneak peek of that in a previous video, but I thought it would be fun to do it again here. So here is what the quilt, actually the finished quilt looks like, and it's gonna come in two different sizes, and I don't know, can I get it all? Yeah, and in the class, you're gonna get patterns for both 12 and a half and six and a half inch blocks. This one's the six and a half inch block, and this little wall hanging finishes at about 40 by 40. If you do the 12 and a half inch blocks, it finishes at about 80 by 80, so a really good size quilt. There's also, I think, like three different finishing options that you can choose to do. I did these small little stars in between them because I thought that was really cute, but I did want to give people an alternative. I didn't do any sashing on the big quilt, and then you can also just do a simple corner sewn instead of the stars right here, uh, but it just turned out so fun. And then for the backing on this one, I used a day sale print by Bonnie and Camille. I did another one of those little uh, flag uh, labels from Fat Quarter Shop as well. Those have been coming in really handy. And then for this one, because I quilted it in the class, I just did a really simple meander quilt. So this class is gonna be really cool. It features 16 different blocks. You're gonna learn, learn a lot of new techniques. And I am gonna show you some different techniques and tricks and tips all the way throughout. I think it has about 24 videos in it, so it's kind of a lot of information, but I wanted it to be really thorough. And I do recommend that you take the Quilting 101 class before you take this class, just because some of the blocks are a little bit more um, intense in technique. There's nothing super hard. I wouldn't say it's advanced at all, um, but definitely an intermediate level. So you'll wanna just have basic skills down, a good quarter of an inch seam, but I think if 
if you're ready to move on to that next step, I would encourage you to try it just because that will improve your quilting. You're going to learn so many new techniques in there. And if you're still working on your quarter inch seam, that's okay. You're going to just improve it as you get through this class. Um, but this one's going to be so much fun and I'm hoping to have it released um, this month. So like I said, it's all done. We're just waiting for the finishing touches and it's gonna be called Scrappy Stars eCourse. And you can find all my eCourses on go.confessionsofahomeschooler.com. And this one will be going live. And make sure you're following me on Instagram and Facebook um, and here on YouTube because I will notify everyone when that class is officially live and you can go sign up and take it. But hopefully you guys like this one. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I have a few other things working in the background that I can't show you, unfortunately. So that's all I have for my works in progress or finished. Actually, I think those were all finished items. Um, so except for my granny squares, which is gonna be probably in progress for a while. Um, but I wanna move on because I have a lot of acquisitions to share with you more than normal. I have quite a few patterns that are gonna be coming down the pike and I needed to get in supplies to work on some of those. So I have some of that to share with you. Um, but I wanna start off with my new quilting machine because a lot of you know that I purchased a long arm frame and then I got a quilting machine from a friend of mine. And so she's actually sending me her frame here hopefully soon so I can try them out because the one I have is a little bit sketchy. Um, it works, but I'd like to see it on the frame it's supposed to be on. But I have had a chance to play around with it, so I wanna show you some of those. And then I also took a class with my local quilt guild, a free motion quilting class that I just did on my regular machine um, at a location. So um, I wanted to share those because hopefully it'll inspire some of you and it was a lot of fun. So they had us make these little quilt sandwiches to try out and just test our machines. And then we went through and we just worked on specific little designs. And I wanna say the quilt class, if you haven't done it yet, was really nice because I probably would not have taken the time to do this at home. Also, we had an instructor giving us tips and hints and you know she gave us all kinds of different um, tips to help us with our free motion quilting. So the first tip she gave us was a drawing pad and she had us sit there and draw all kinds of different designs. She, you know, they were designs led by her. So she was telling us what to do, which made it a lot easier. So my brain wasn't just trying to come up with something fun on its own. Um, and we just sat there and we drew out the designs first. Once we were done drawing the designs, then we moved to our machine and started quilting on our blocks. So here was my first sample. And this one was just a regular like little loop de loo And I was really familiar with this. I do it all the time on my own. So I feel like I did okay. I mean, the main thing is to try and keep things like evenly spaced. So I definitely have some areas where I probably could have worked on that a little bit more. And then I did this little section down here where I was really trying to just do really tight, small um, loop de loos up here and then those pebbles down here. And I will say that pebbles are harder than they look. As you can see, mine are quite messy and I went over the pebbles more than I should have. I even had my glasses on. <laughs> but when you're doing something that small and you have your your uh, quilting foot there, it's sort of hard to see where you are. So the pebbles were actually more of a challenge than I thought they were. They're just little circles, but those were probably, those in the feathers were the hardest ones for me. The next one that we did were was working in nine patch squares. And so she was showing us how to get around a nine patch without um, moving, you know, without having to break thread. And so that was really interesting because I had never um, thought about that before. But like, for example, this whole section was created without me breaking thread or even really going over stitches. Now, one thing that I learned in this section is that I'm horrible at straight lines. I'm pretty good or better anyways at curved lines and just fluid motion like that. When it comes to trying to do straight lines, yeah, count me out. So that I definitely need to work on, um, but it was still a lot of fun. And then we did things like this where we were just filling in specific areas, so kind of a more custom look. And so obviously I have a lot of work to do. And then this last one was my favorite. This is called the clamshell. And this one for some reason came relatively naturally to me. It's not perfect, but it was really easy for my brain to understand. And I just think it turned out so pretty. And you don't notice the main thing I learned is that you don't notice the mistakes necessarily if it's all filled in with quilting because people just sort of see that overall design and they're not like, oh, you messed up here and you messed up here, <laughs> right? So um, anyways, it was a lot of fun. The last thing we worked on were feathers and feathers are also definitely something I need to keep working on. We did a lot of feather drawing. She had, she did show us how to do the feathers. As you can see, my drawings are not great. I think I'm actually a better, quilter than I am a drawer um, and they just aren't very even and I was really having a hard time now. I did do a couple YouTube videos and I came up with this, which this method is so cool. Um, and you're actually breaking it up here 
and here, and then you just don't cross over that line. Anyways, this was really interesting, and I think this helped me quite a bit. Um, we did a lot of echoing, we did some swirls, and things like that. Now, unfortunately, when we got to the feather section, my machine had decided that it was done quilting, and I started, I tried a new needle, I tried a new bobbin, it was just skipping stitches, and not even stitches, it was skipping like large sections. And I was like, man, my machine isn't working very well. And the lady next to me on both sides said the exact same thing. They're like, yeah, I think my machine is done for the day. It's just doing the same thing. So I felt better that it wasn't my me messing up. Um, but once your machine starts giving you a hard time, it's really hard to focus on something as intricate as a feather. So I put my machine away, came home. The next day I pulled out another little piece and I went ahead and tried to do some more free motion feathers. And so I was just having fun and filling in things and working on feathers. So as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do on my feathers. Um, and this was just all done on my TL2000 here that you always see on my videos. We also did some border work and so we just had some lines drawn and then we just had to do something inside of there. So this little swirl leaf design was a lot of fun. And then I did that um, kind of scalloped design with the straight geometric mix in there, which I actually think kind of turned out really cool. So overall, I think the class was a lot of fun. It was very informative. I learned a lot and I definitely tried some things I probably would not have had enough guts to try just on my own. So if you're interested in learning, I would highly recommend taking an in-person class. The instructor was amazing and her quilting was absolutely beautiful. She was very knowledgeable and I learned quite a bit. So now I have some of those skills in my arsenal and so I went ahead and went downstairs and started playing with that long arm. And I will say that it's a lot easier on the long arm. It's easier to move the machine than to move the fabric, um, but it's also a little more <laughs> intimidating. So I'm practicing on that one. I'm having a lot of fun. I'll insert some video here on some of the things that I've been working on. Um, those clamshells are still a favorite of mine. I've also done some little flowers. Uh, those are a lot of fun. And just getting from one place to the next without breaking thread is kind of my goal there because it's a hassle to break your thread and start over again. And so if you can just keep going with a design, that really makes it so much easier. So I went ahead and did those. I did some long swirls from a video I followed from Andrella Walters. I highly recommend her. She has some great quilting videos. Um, and then I just did some other fun playing around. I had a lot of fun with it. I think I'm ready to try an actual quilt on there. Um, so that will be coming soon. And otherwise, yeah, that's kind of my new thing I'm trying to learn. And it's definitely a challenge. So I like it. I like that I'm learning something new and I'm having a lot of fun with it. Okay, so let's head into the what's new at Fat Quarter Shop section and all my acquisitions because I have a lot of fun things to show. So Fat Quarter Shop sent me a couple new patterns. This first one is called the Amaryllis Quilt Pattern. It looks like there's a lot of different sizes in there, table runner, throw, lap, and twin. So that's really cool. Um, this is put out by It's So Emma and um, looks like they kind of did this in Christmassy colors, but I feel like the design you could sort of do in just, you know, any colors you wanted. This would be a really cute patriotic one. They also sent out this one. This is called Cut, Press, and Sew Cross Stitch. This is by Lori Holt. This one is just really fun and cute. Of course, I always love all of her stuff. And then the other thing they sent me were the Snail Trail Foundation Papers. So it comes in the six and a half and 12 and a half inch sizes. And they do have a video on how to do these. And Kimberly has talked about them in their podcast as well. Uh, just because these ones are a little bit tricky and the the, um, the finished pattern looks really easy, but then when you look at the act, oh, was that upside down? <laughs> Sorry. When you look at the actual paper, it's like, ooh, that's a lot. So uh, you definitely want to be paying attention to your fabric placement on this. I like that they put the, um, the kind of shaded ones in there so you, just to kind of help keep you, you know, as which ones are background and which ones are print fabric. Anyways, so those are new. If you are into foundation paper piecing, this little snail trail block is really cute. And I think it also looks like um, water waves. So if you have like a kind of aquatic themed quilt, this would be a really cute maybe border or something around it, or, you know, like uh, sashing rows in between your rows. That'd be really cute. They also released three new bags. So they're coming out with the different colors of these bags and I really love these bags. So they're like a mesh bag. Um, it says flat, they're 11 by 16 and open, they are 10 by 13. So really good size bags and they have this new pink color. This one is called a peony. They have this greenish one, which is called Misty. 
this blue one, which is called Bluebell. So all three colors are super cute. And like I said, they're really good sizes. They do have a zipper closure, which I love. And then, you know, I kind of like that you can see through them because you can kind of tell what's in your bag. So it's not like a open your bag to see what's in there <laughs> before you take it somewhere type of bag. So I actually really like that. And you can actually cross stitch on these too. I think they have a couple of videos showing you some designs you can add to the bag. So I think like a little flower or you could even put your names on them or something. So super cute. Um, and these should all be still in stock last time I checked. So if you like them, head over to Fat Quarter Shop and grab. The other thing I got, and I think this is semi new, but um, I'm not sure how new <laughs> because I just stumbled across it, um, is I got this little melamine tray and this is uh, using the cookbook print from Lori Holt. These are put out by Riley Blake and they're just this little plastic tray white on the back and I actually use this to store some of my in um, progress projects and so as I am doing quilt blocks or whatever I'll stack them all on here just to keep them all together and off my work table and I've actually found that this tray is sort of helpful so it's not really a sewing notion I mean you could use it in your kitchen as well because it's just adorable but I've really been using it more in my sewing room just to keep everything I'll keep the fabric here and all the quilt blocks that I'm working on here and then I can just lift that up and move it out of my way to do something else so this has actually been kind of a handy new notion in my sewing room and plus it's super cute. The other thing I recently got were these and I these are quarter inch thick free motion quilting rulers. So here's how thick they are. The rulers themselves are a quarter inch thick and that is so that you can do free motion quilting. You can do it on your own machine. You need a quarter inch foot on that machine and the foot itself is a quarter inch thick and that's so that you can run that foot right along the edge of this and you're not going to pop over and sew yourself or you know break a needle or something. These are all by Creative Grids and I just got, uh, I think these were the three recommended by Angela Walters to start. So this first one is called Slim. It's just got the straight edges and then it has these curved edges as well. And so I thought that would be really handy for sort of a variety of different shapes. And since it's Creative Grids, it does have these non-slip on the back, which is also really nice. And then it has some markings so that you can help um, line things up. This next one is called Curvy, oh, Chevy, sorry, Chevy. And it's kind of got this chevron shape at the bottom. And then I also liked that it had this square shape because I thought that could really help me getting around some of those square blocks. And then this last one is called Elvira. And this is just a little curvy shape. And this is good for all kinds of different things when you need a curve. I got it thinking I would probably be doing um, feathers. So you'd use this as the spine for your feather and then you can kind of come off. Now I will say that I haven't really, I was just free motion, the stuff that I showed you earlier, but I think if you're wanting something that's a little bit more um, consistent, then using these rulers is a good way to go. Now before you use these rulers with your free motion machine, you do have to get a ruler base for it. And so I did manage to pick one of those up. Um, I got kind of lucky because they're sold out everywhere. <laughs> and so I did find a website and I was like, oh, I hope this is a legit website, but they got decent reviews and I actually had my ruler table with to me within like a few days. So I was like, okay, thank goodness. Um, so now I get to try that. I haven't tried doing any of the ruler work yet. So that'll be even a new thing to get trying soon. And I do have a quilt down there that's ready to go. So on local quilt shop day, I did do a little bit of traveling. I went to Fancy Tiger Crafts, which is one of my local quilt shops, and I love it. And I got a little variety bundle here of fabric, and these are gonna be for bags. I got a little bit of drawstring. This is just a twill ribbon that I'm gonna be using probably for a drawstring bag. I found this fun, this is kind of a canvasy print. This is, I think again, from Robert Kaufman. They have the coolest um, canvas, so really pretty. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put as the lining for that yet, but I figure I have something in my stash. And then I got some of these Ruby Star Society prints. These are a little bit unlike me, but it was so, the colors were just so fun. I just kind of had to. So I have this print. I also got this little polka dot print and then I have this print. And so we're gonna be mixing and matching these into one bag and probably using this drawstring with it. So I think that's gonna be really cute. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a drawstring squishy bag or maybe a new version bag, we'll see. So stay tuned for that. I'm sure that will be coming soon. This next thing isn't really a purchase, but Poppy Cotton did send it to me just to check out. And this one is called Sunshine and Chamomile and it's releasing in November, 2022. So November of this year. And we'll just go through these prints because they are so much fun. So they have this cute little hexi print, which is adorable. They had a polka dot. I always love Poppy Cotton's colors cause they're just so much fun. This is a little floral. Here's a white version of that hexi print. 
Here's another floral. Uh, this one's a little bit of a light lemon color behind that floral. Some cute little daisies, more polka dots, more florals. Those daisies are adorable. Here's like a little kind of beehive looking one. So we're getting into the navies and so much fun. There's a light pink and then they go into these reds and the reds are a little bit more like a corally red, I would say. Polka dots and then those daisies. So here they are all up close. And again, this is Sunshine and Chamomile and it releases in November. The other thing I got was this canvas print. So this is a Lori Hole print and it's, a, like I said, it's a canvas. So this is her decor weight fabric. And I've been needing to redo my pressing station back here for a while. I can't remember how long it's been this color, but it's definitely starting to get brown, like burn marks on it and things like that, no matter what I do. Anyways, I thought this print was so much fun and it is the canvas print. And hopefully it will hold up a little bit better just cause it's thicker. Um, but I just thought this was so much fun and I love all the colors. so. Super excited to refinish that. And if you haven't seen my video, I do have a video on how to do your DIY ironing board back there. You can make it any size or shape you want. A friend of mine cut that board so it would fit perfectly on top of my two by four Ikea shelving. And so it's just the perfect workspace for me. So pretty soon it's gonna have this fun print on it. And I did get this at Fat Quarter Shop. The other thing I picked up, and this was kind of a big one, but that quarter shop put out a sale on some of their kits that they were um, like, just, I guess they must be like short stock or whatever. Anyways, this is, look at this box. I love the boxes. So this is the flea market windows quilt kit. And this is put out by Lori Holt, Riley Blake. And so it comes in this lovely large <laughs> box that I can't hold up. And it's a quilt kit for this particular quilt. I don't think I'm actually gonna make the quilt though. I really purchased it for the fabric inside because I like the flea market fabric and it was like 40% off or something. They had a huge sale and they only had a few left. So I just kind of happened to get lucky enough, but this box is magnetic. And so it just opens like that. And then inside is all of the contents. And so we'll go through that really quick. So it does have the pattern for the uh, flea market windows quilt and it comes with templates and all of that kind of stuff. And who knows, maybe I will make this. Um, I don't think so, but you never know. So it comes with this fabric inside, which is just a really fun backing, I think. It'll be good for, it. it is the background fabric on that quilt, so you could actually use it as a background fabric. And maybe I'll still do that, but it was quite a bit of this fabric. And so this would be a really cute, fun backing, so. It also came with this red, which is for those little circle, um, I think they're called yo-yos, and I'm not a huge fan of those, so I definitely won't be using it for that, but binding would be really cute. And then it came with two charm packs for the um, flea market fabric, and here's all of the different prints that are in that charm pack, so lots of fun. And then it came with one, um, 10 inch stacker again by Riley Blake. And again, those stackers have all of these fun colors. And so I think these colors are gonna be really useful. And then, like I said, it has, it comes with this really nice and sturdy box. The box is really cute inside and it has a magnetic closure right here. So super handy. So I kind of liked the whole thing. I probably, like I said, won't make the quilt. I mean, maybe I will, you never know, but I definitely wanted all of the fabric and the box and the price was right. Okay, and the last thing that I purchased, and this is again all from Fat Quarter Shop, but I do have a fall quilt coming that um, is gonna be really, really cute. It's already designed and I can't wait to show you guys. So instead of doing my traditional white background on this, I wanted to do low volume prints. And so I needed kind of a, I have some here, but not enough for the quilt that I'm planning on doing. So I just went through Fat Quarter Shop's website and I just picked a handful of different fig tree low volumes. They may or not may not be from the state, same line. I think some of these are from actually their Halloween line. Some are from their stitched line. Um, and so, but they're all their fabrics kind of blend together. So I just wanted a set of low volumes that I could use and have enough of for this upcoming quilt project. So this one's gonna be kind of scrappy, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. I also picked up some reds, greens, and blues, or their aquas. I love fig trees, aquas. So I got this cute gingham one. I think these are all from Fresh Figs, if I'm not mistaken. This one might, 
not be, <laughs> might be from a farmhouse fall leftover. Maybe it was fresh figs, I don't know. And then they had this green, so there's gonna be some leaves happening in this quilt. And then I got this red, which I think I'm gonna be using for the binding. And then I got this beautiful floral print. This is gonna be my backing. Look at how fun that is. And so I think that with this red for the binding is gonna uh, just look really nice. And then I did pick up one other thing. Like I said, this is sort of more stashed than normal, but I have so many things coming down the pike. This is a little fat eighth bundle. This is the new fig tree stitched line. And I loved all of those colors. So you'll get to see that coming soon. It's just gonna be a fun. Um, this is for a fall quilt. These colors are a little bit, I don't know, summery, but I think it's gonna just look really nice. So that'll be coming soon, so stay tuned. And then the last thing I wanna share is my Chairberry quilt. So I have this, I have made this in two different colors. One I did in a really light kind of pinks and greens, and I love that one so much. It's horrible to photograph though because the fabric is so light, but in person, it's adorable. And then I did put up my red, white, and blue version behind me because, I mean, we're getting kind of close to July, and so I thought, is it too early to pull those out? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Anyways, it's kind of a summer fun quilt, so I wanted to hang that one up. I know I'm gonna get a few questions on what is behind me on the chair here. I'm not gonna show you that because that's still a work in progress, but it is part of the Sew With Me series. And so if you guys have been following along with the Sew With Me blocks, we have 12 blocks total. I've had a lot of questions. We're gonna have 12 blocks total. I think we're on block number 10 right now, and we'll get to block number 12. Once we release block number 12, I'm gonna show you finishing options for those, and I have a lot of fun finishing ideas for your Sew With Me blocks. So Stay tuned for that. We've had a lot of positive feedback from those and a lot of requests for another one. So we've had a lot of requests and we will be doing another Sew With Me series for 2023. So that will be starting in January of 2023. And I'll be a similar situation where we're doing 12 different blocks and then some finishing. So a lot of you guys are liking that and hopefully you're learning some new skills following along with those videos. And they're a lot of fun for me too. So we're definitely gonna keep doing those. So I think that's gonna be it for today's video. I don't have any other projects that I can show you unfortunately, but I do have a lot of fun things in the works. So stay tuned. Make sure you're following me on Instagram or Facebook and here on YouTube. I will announce all of the fun projects coming soon on those platforms. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps me out. And thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time. An alphabetical number or letter. <laughs> alphabetical number. Now not all patterns do this, but my patterns do always have an alphabetical or a number alphabetical letter. Now, not all patterns do this, but all of my patterns have an either an alphabet number, number, letter. Okay, they either have a letter or a number. Now, not all patterns do this, but all of my patterns do have. Thanks, Jax. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. I can do it. Okay. Move. <laughs> He's laying on the Jax is laying on the things. Okay, I have to move my chair here. I literally just did this, what's it called? Phew, sheesh. And we'll just run that whole year. That was Jax. <laughs>